I've been looking for a cheap multimeter um, for doing odd jobs and for poking around in different equipment for a while and I particularly like, if you look at my, my meter I've been using, the Unity one, um, I like the ones where you've got a separate range setting for each of the ranges you want to use and this one's quite good as well because it's got an automatic range as well. But I don't like the auto ranging uh, feature on some multimeters because I know roughly what I'm going to be measuring and I don't have time to wait for the meter to decide it's not 1.9 volts, it's 19 or it's 190 because it takes a while for the range to change for it to stabilize and then read and it's slow. Um, so this is quite nice this meter because I, what attracted me to it was that it's got the ranges here separate and individual ranges and also an auto ranging for voltage DC and AC volts uh, you know it's generally sort of got a good feature and and um, I thought for 24 25 pounds whatever it was it was worth a punt you know it's a, a reasonable thing it's got 10,000 counts which is uh, 0 to 9999 um, so it's got a good range although the accuracy doesn't really need that if you look at the, the specification and the accuracy of the meter but for m general purpose it seemed pretty good it comes in this box digital multimeter box and in there you've got a user manual, a bag that it comes in a couple of um, caps in the, in the test leads and a type a type K yeah, a type K thermocouple for measuring temperature right, so that's what you get in the box uh, the instructions, I have read them <laughs> uh, interesting a couple of things in there um, that need to be looked at but I've been using it for about a month now and I have done a few jobs with it but I've used it on a daily basis working on the bench uh, testing stuff so I thought rather than just outbox it and give you an overview it's when did I buy it? It's probably about five five weeks ago I've been using it so five weeks of use it's had and it's not bad accuracy is good uh, functionality is pretty good there's a couple of annoying things and rather going through all the accuracy we can do a couple of measurements but I could connect up the Roto Schwartz supply or the, the DC precision supply and show you the accuracy but you can take it from me it's accurate okay it's plenty accurate for what I want to do poking around and if you unless you're taking some real precision measurements it will give you a pretty good indication of what's what but there are a couple of things um, I don't really appreciate about it. Uh, so let's, let's deal with the negative points first, because you might be in a hurry and just get on with this, shall we? So um, number one is the display. The display is pretty clear um, at this viewing angle, um, and if you tip it up towards you, so I'm looking at it, you can see the there is a viewing angle. And if the meter's behind you on the side and you're looking around to check a measurement, you can't see what it is because it's it's invisible. So it's a polarized. Um, display with the um, twisted pneumatic. It's the one where the crystal realigns to review uh, to reveal the backlight. So the backlight is presumably on all the time, which is using power. And um, display is not great. If I compare this to that, you can see instantly that that one is much more readable. I can read this from upside. I can read this from there. I can see that I'm sitting in front of it. So it's got almost 360 degree of viewing all right so the display is a problem so in high brightness situations if I turn the lights off you can see it is quite bright but out in the daylight I was poking around in my um, sister's car and I couldn't really see I was trying to hold the meter under the bonnet so I could see what the display said because it just really isn't bright enough to be used outside so bear that in mind you may be better off with the standard it looks funky it looks good but it probably uses a lot more battery life and it hasn't got a very wide viewing angle and in bright lights you can't see it, right? So that's the other thing. Now, it comes in the box with these two probes. The uh, minor thing really, the probes were really blunt and rounded on the end and I found it very difficult poking around on circuit boards because I was kept getting bad connections basically. It wouldn't break through the tarnish or the varnish or the flux on the circuit boards and make the measurement. So I sharpened those up. I just used a, um, a little flat wheel in a in a Dremel and just made a point on them which greatly improved it because they just no peakiness on the end of there. They're brass to tips actually. When I rubbed off the plating 
Are they brass? Yes, they're brass. They're brass tips, alright? So I've taken the plating off and then sharpened up the brass. Um, so the features, functions, what have we got? We've got the, um, you can read this on the specification, so I'm, I'm going to be telling you things you already know probably. But you've got this, um, we'll just go around to clockwise, shall we, and talk about the ranges, the things I've used. Um, off, obviously. Annoyingly, actually, when this thing times out after two or three minutes, it goes beep, beep, and beeps at you and then shuts off. You have to switch back to not to off and then switch back on. It would be nice if it just you just moved it or, in fact, the um, this one here, when it times out, you can just hit that button and it comes back on. All right, so this one times out after a longer time because it's not wasting power on the display. And to get it to go again, you do that. You don't accidentally, you've had to do this and then set the wrong range and note what range you're going to. It's just much quicker just to go like that while you're still looking at the PCB. You can almost do it um, without looking, all right? So, but this one, when it times out, you have to switch off, which is annoying. Um, well, non-contact voltage is this um, NCV sensor at the top, and I think it's just um, a electric field sensor. If I bring off this this uh, mains with mains wire, yeah, there you go. So it's. It, if I turn it round, you can't really use it on a wire reliably because I'm guessing that's being screened by the earth wire within the cable. But if you turn the cable round, you can see, right? So it's quite good on single conductors. I suppose if you're looking to in a fuse box to find out whether a single conductor has got any juice on it and it might be live, then it will work, right? But it's it's um, you have to watch what you're doing on a cable with more than one core in it. I have tried it on the uh, light switch traces in my house in the behind the plaster and it doesn't work it, it'll get an action it'll get a response on the light switch but it can't really detect the, the mains cable the twin and earth uh, one mil lighting cable in the wall it's a plastic conduit so it's not a steel conduit so I took the cover plate off and checked so it's no good for tracing wires in the walls but you know for a general check of a, a single in conductor as to whether you've got any AC, obviously it won't work with DC, it's only on AC, it'll pick it up, right, and you get this green light come on. So that works, all right. Um, so that's an on-contact voltage setting. Then we've got the volts and ohms, sorry, volts, DC and AC, and you can select the range. And when you go into the range, you can see you automatically get um, a hertz reading. So you get the AC voltage and the frequency, all right. Uh, what have we got? Yeah, we could... Um, <laughs> we can just do a measurement now. I've got the so I've got a Roche Schwartz precision signal generator up there. Let's connect it up. See how I correct the frequency, shall we? Okay, and what we set to? So we've got um, it's set to 1.000 volts AC and it's set to 1 kilohertz, all right. So you're reading 1.001, which is really accurate. You know, that's um, that's one millivolt, isn't it? Within the uh, Roche Schwartz is something like 20 microvolts accuracy. So very accurate. And you see, it's 999 hertz. The Roche Schwartz is saying 1.0000 kilohertz. So it's within one hertz. If I just put the frequency down to 500, yeah, 499 hertz. So it's, the frequency is reading a bit low, but I know the generator is correct. Now if we go down to mains frequency, 50 hertz, <coughs> we've got 1.004, uh, 5 volts, 50 hertz. So it's accurate, you know, it's plenty accurate for what you want to do with it, really. Um, and if we go above, if we go to 1 kilohertz, it reads 999. But if I go to 1001 hertz, you get uh, the 1 kilohertz. So you get, it goes up to 1000, look. Now if I go 1002 hertz overload, yeah. So it's the range is it, maximum frequency is one kilohertz, and it's not bad actually. I mean, it's reading that at one volt. Let's see if it picks it up at 500 millivolts RMS, and then put it back to 500 hertz, for example. Yeah, there you go. So you're three millivolts out, thereabouts, and you've got 499 hertz. So the 
it's working okay. And then if I, um, we're on auto ranging AC at the moment, so let's put out something stupid like 50 millivolts. Look at that. Uh, the frequency has gone doolally. It's not actually got enough voltage to detect frequency, so it's not telling you, but it's, uh, that is 50, um, 500 hertz at 50 millivolts. Let's make it, <coughs> okay. So 10.19. AC voltage range looks pretty good, doesn't it? Actually, I mean, can't complain about that at all. Now, if we try try the DC, let's turn the Brody Schwartz power, bench power supply on. See what we get. It's warming up. I should really leave this on for about 10 minutes to warm up before we before we get to that. So we switch to DC, the DC switch, and let's just do a measurement of one volt. There you go, so it's um, 2 millivolts out. What's the spec on this? 1.000? Yeah, so it, the power supply could be a millivolt out as well, plus or minus 1 millivolt. So um, that's alright, and then we'll do 10. Yeah. So 2 or 3 millivolts out, which is well within spec, and um, 20. Yep, yeah, again, good. And then 30. All right, so you know, so the voltage me reading is quite good, and it goes up to 750 volts maximum AC. I think you can put into it, or 1,000 volts DC. So for general single phase measurement, you, want to, you wouldn't want to use this on a three phase system, but on a single phase system, you'd be okay. All right. Now on the ohm range, <coughs> let's take those out of there. The ohm range, I've used it. It's pretty good. It measures okay. It has got a pretty interesting. Um, if you go to the manual ohms range down here where you select the range, you get up to a, a thousand mega ohms. Is that a giga ohm? Anyway, it works. It's um it's fine, it goes down to a hundred. And if I short the probes together, you do get a, a zero, okay. So on a thousand ohms you get 0.2 which is measuring the impedance of the uh, test leads. And I'm guessing, I mean, I've done some measure, I wouldn't bother using this for an accurate measurement of a 1% resistor, but certainly for checking the general value or something within 5%, it's fine, it's, uh, it works all right. And it does, it does get to the value if I get some resistors out. <coughs> Obviously the settling time is important to people because they don't want to be hanging about all day waiting for Christmas. Uh, yeah. So let's check some resistors. Let's check a 10 mega ohm resistor. Come out and pack it. Talk amongst yourselves. Right, so we'll go on to 100 mega ohms. And these are 10 mega ohm resistors. At one percent, so yeah, that's all right, isn't it? <coughs> that's fine. Let's try another one, see how good they are. Oh, these are 0603s, they're pretty good. Yeah, like those, they're good. Let's throw those away, I don't want to lose them. <coughs> so you can see it settles down quite quick, doesn't it? So let's go down to the other end of the range and we'll go down to a <coughs> three ohm resistor. That should be a a reasonable challenge, checking the loudspeaker or something, uh, DC impedance or the resistance to the coil. And where's it gone? There it is. So here's 3 ohms. So it reads zero on the range, obviously. So let's put it on 1000. So we saw 0.2 on the on the leads, didn't we? If I shorted the leads out, we got 0.2. So it's 3 ohms. Yeah, so I mean, Plenty accurate for most people. Really, really plenty accurate for most people. I suppose we could check some caps, couldn't we? But the capacitors I have here, without putting them on the bridge, which would take time, um, I think they're 20%, but it will give us an idea how long it takes to settle. So don't take this as an accuracy reading, but I have done some readings. I checked it when I first got it, and um, the capacitance was well accurate enough for uh, everyday use really. If you need to know capacitance and stuff accurate, accurately you're going to have to use a, a proper bridge to do the measurement. 
I'll slide those back in here. So this one is a 180 picofarad capacitor. One cap. Find it. There it is. So it's reading 207.207 nanofarad is 207 picofarads. It's probably right within reason. I could put it on the Wanker bridge. But you don't need to know that accurately. You need to know whether it's 10 microfarads, 8 microfarads, or something else. Let's try a big electrolytic. <coughs> uh, what have we got? Something that's accurate. A Panasonic one. There's a Panasonic EFT that's rated plus minus 10%, so it should read that's 33 microfarads. Negative is on that side, so let's just try that. Now you do have to wait a while for it to stabilise. So it's reading 35.19, so 10%. Yeah, it could be up to 36 or 30, but as low as 30. So yeah, I mean, it's pretty good enough, the old um, capacitance range. So <coughs> Hertz, again, I think only goes up to 1 kilohertz. So I can't see why the... Um, the range would be different for um, between voltage measurement and hertz and normal hertz. So I'm guessing it only goes up to one kilohertz, but we could be wrong. Uh, let's put more voltage on it. Five volts. And then we'll put in uh, a kilohertz. And then if I go to two kilohertz, it's just going to go. Oh no, actually on the frequency range, when you're not in the voltage range, you've got a higher fault, uh, frequency reading. I missed that. So let's see how far high she'll go, shall we? Um, let's try 200 kilohertz. Yeah, look, 200 kilohertz at 5 volts. Not bad, actually. That's a sine wave that it's measuring. 49.8%. Um, What's that reading? What is that reading, then? What's the 49.8%? Can you guess? what that is. I'm referring to frequency measurement. That's going to be probably the mark space ratio. Yeah, it's the, they call it the duty cycle, so it's the time spent above zero and below zero, I'm guessing. We're, we're feeding in an AC waveform at the moment. And, um, yeah, I wonder what it would do with a triangular waveform. We'll find out, shall we? Um, so that's 199.9 kilohertz. Let's try 500 kilohertz. Well, wow. yeah, impressive. 500 kilohertz. Let's try 750 kilohertz. Yeah. Let's try 1 megahertz. Yep, so it's still reading at 1 meg. Might have to get the next generator out. So let's try 1.3 megahertz. Oop, that's wrong. Ignore this reading, it's coming up. It'd be one three zero zero kilohertz. Yeah, one point two two megahertz. So, what do they claim the range actually is? Frequency range. What is the frequency range? We want to know, don't we? Yes, we do. Where is it? No, ah, it just says one megahertz in the spec. Yeah, on the uh, specification. It says up to 1 megahertz or 999.9 kilohertz. Look at that. And um, <laughs> I've discovered an undocumented, uh, unless I'm wrong, they seem to have splattered the spec all over the place rather than having a single spec table. It's all sort of intermingled in the instruction booklet. Yeah, in the frequency um, booklet thing, you can see it goes up to 9.999 kilohertz, 0.001 megahertz is the resolution and uh, in the other part of the instructions it might be in here somewhere but in the other parts of the instructions it only says it produces a K here whereas in fact this is producing an M for megahertz so it's actually got a range which is not documented in the manual and it's working at 5 volts let's try it at 1 volt yeah, I mean, it's pretty good, isn't it? For a rough frequency, that 51.5% should be 50%, but it is, it's obviously got a slight offset. I don't think it's the Red Schwartz generator doing that. I think it's definitely 
the um, bias in this, but who cares really? I mean, if it was a square wave pulse or a PWM drive, you could actually see quite well about what the PWM was setting was and what frequency it was running at. So that's quite a useful function, actually. Right, that's, um, that's the frequency done with, so let's forget that now. Now let's go on to the... Uh, there you go. Let's go on to the next thing, which is the... This uh, mode is the diode forward, continu forward continuity mode. And if it's less than 15 ohms and you short it out, the green light comes on. Um, if it's over 15 ohms, let's try it on a 17 ohm resistor. My kingdom for our resistor. Okay, so when you put a slightly uh, less, it flashes, and then that's quite nice actually. It's given, even though I'm on diode continuity mode, it flashes, and that's a 23 ohm resistor I've put in there. So it's actually flashing and say, hey, that's a 23 ohms impedance I'm seeing, and the green light's flashing and it's beeping at me. So let's try 100 ohms. Let's put 100 ohms on there. See what happens. <coughs> right then, here we go. Okay, so now it's dropped off into voltage mode, it's reading 90, 90 millivolts. So that diode continuity symbol there, the diode symbol to the left, is showing that that's the forward drop across the probes. And this one's saying, this is a, I'm seeing this ohms. It might not be necessarily that ohms, but that's what it's seeing. So in lower, <coughs> lower ohmages, it detects the ohms. And um, one thing I did find actually was quite good. I've got um, circuits which are in parallel with the, basically, where I found the VA bonus, if I can find something to write on, and a pen, which I can. I've, in drive circuits for FETs and things like that, you've often got a very cheap drive circuit. It's just a, um, a diode in parallel with something like a 49 ohm resistor. And my old meter would um, just show um, because it wasn't passing enough current through the diode, you, it would always just show the resistance. It couldn't tell whether the diode, you could tell if the diode was short, but not if it was, you know, if it was leaky, you couldn't tell. Um, and you really um, couldn't easily tell whether the, the resistor was blown or not. But with this one, when you probe across here, you get the 49 ohm reading, which is quite nice. And when I swap the probes over, I get the. Uh, diode forward drop reading, so a 0.2 volts or whatever it was, so it's actually quite interesting that um, this allowed me to check those, normally I have to unsolder one to double check that this diode hasn't gone leaky or was working properly with my old meter, but with this meter I can do an, uh, an in-circuit test and the way it works is actually a benefit, but um, the only downside of this thing is that the fact that when I'm whizzing through testing the boards and just testing and touching and trying to find what goes well I'm moving around and you know going and sometimes you think well where does that go so you stick your probe on the area of interest and then you just run down the, p the legs of the ICs and you can run down the lane until you get a beep okay now the trouble with this one is um, this mode isn't that this continuity mode I can touch these together look and I don't get a beep <coughs> my other meter this one as soon as they touch, you get an immediate beep, and if you remove it before, you'll still get the beep. You'll know that there was some continuity there. But this one, I'm touching these together. So when you run down and you're trying to find on a big board, you're trying to find out where things go by running down rows of pins or headers, it's not good. You have to go much more slowly, and it takes more time. It's only a minor issue, but it's just... I wish it was instant out. I wish it, as soon as it saw a low impedance connection like that, it would beep at me. Because my head's on the board, I'm running up and down, and pfft. so that's a that's a thing I don't like about it. Um, what else have we got around here? So if we go around this way, you've got the live connect live connection, which <clears throat> you're supposed to take out this one, okay? And then if I get this IEC mains leak, don't do this at home and stuff it in there, this is live you get a live indication on the live pin you don't get live 
and you don't get it on ground. So it's sort of like the pro band, and you get the all three what? All, um, is that all three lights or just two? Yeah, there's three lights on there. Look. Okay. So you get three lights, and it's live detect. A um, couple of other foibles and strange things about it. Again, this feels like pretty good. Um, a pretty good switch actually. It's got a nice positive action to it. It's an easy to set, and it's not easy. Well, it's also, it's impossible to. Yeah, well, you can do it, but it's very difficult to have to get stuck between ranges. Um, concentrate on this area here. You obviously got your thermocouple input, and you've got your uh, normal up to 750 volts AC, a thousand max DC across these two, and then <coughs> you've got milliamp range. And this is quite strange actually, because you've got the 600 milliamps <coughs> select. Sorry, 600 milliamps. Why doesn't that? Why doesn't that do AC or DC, guys? All right, so the blue ones, the blue ranges mean what? What's the significance of the blue? The input? <coughs> 100 milliamps AC, 10 amps AC. So that's AC, this is DC, the white one. AC again for the blue. I'm not really sure why the resistance is a blue because they're not AC. Um, these are yellow, these are sort of like unique functions obviously in yellow. So why they're blue I don't know. That's a, that's a measurement function CF which you think would be yellow. So I don't know why they've colour coded that in print. If you can think of it and leave it down in the comments, but it's not striking me at the moment. Um, I'll go on this BF, so you've got a torch on the end, which is pretty good. And you've got a hold button, obviously. Um, and a bit strange down here, the 600 milliamp range. So you can go up to 600, so you can measure up to 600. But if you go over, it's got a 600 fuse in it. I'd expect a one amp fuse or something like that, so that if you need to read up to the limit of uh, 600 milliamps AC, <clears throat> clearly if we're going 10 amps, this is the 10 amp connection which goes across a big meter shunt inside. And they're both fused. I've look, had a look inside, the fuses don't have a rating on them, which I'd expect for a multimeter CAT2 fuse because, um, you know, if you touch a very high voltage, like three phase um, on current, you put this across a three-phase buzz bar, for example, for 15 volts. Um, if the fuse doesn't blow, hasn't got a 600 volt rating on the fuse, and it doesn't blow, you can turn up a, a poor quality fuse, or one that's got no sand or a spring inside, um, can turn into a plasma. And you literally, because there's so much power available on those those buzz bars, you can, you you you, you <laughs> Your multimeter can turn into a bomb or a flare in your hand within you know a split second. There's so much energy there that you get an electrical explosion if the fuse doesn't blow cleanly. That's why you should never really, on any cheap multimeter, you should never measure any three-phase current because if you <clears throat> have a fault condition on your load and you're on a big power supply, it can be you know anything from catching fire to going bang, all bits of plastic flying everywhere, electrical shock and the flash, <coughs> and possible electrocution, I suppose. If it breaks out of the case, so you know, never use a cheap multimeter on on anything over ordinary single phase mains. Is this is a single phase device really? Um, but I would like the 600 milliamps. You know, if you're doing it on 600 and, the, and you go up to 575, and your bloody fuse goes, you've got to take it apart. Now, in the instructions, there's no instructions on how to change this, how to get this boot off. And I'm guessing uh, I don't really want to stretch this and take it apart. But if you give it enough stick. The lubrication it will come off I've had it sort of half off there look so you can just carry on with that and take it apart but I'm not going to do the internals other guys have taken them apart online I'm just talking about the things which um, I think are, are pertinent to this uh, it uses under here there's two AA batteries which don't come in the box 
uh, which I quite like because this one uses 9 volt PP9, PP3 is it? <coughs> and they've got a little small two terminal 9 volts and it doesn't necessarily eat them very much but they're not something I normally have around, I normally have the AAs and the AAAs around so it's a two times uh, AA battery. Um, anyway, so back to the square one. And the only other thing I like about this is if I put this on current rating and you know the old scenario where you've been measuring current and you go back to measuring voltage. So you put it into the current thing. I better take that out of there actually. It's telling me you're in the wrong lead position for measuring current. If I switch this down to current, he said. Okay, so on the 10 amp range, make a light of me now. Well, I'm in the 10 amp range, I'm on 10 amp connections. Why did it do that? So if it's at all, if it's if you go through any range, I suppose that makes sense, doesn't it? If you go through any range, you get the lead, and then it doesn't matter what you do with this. So you say, oh, fair enough. I want to use current. Oh yeah, but it's the right place. It still keeps beeping, so it doesn't reset itself. I'm guessing it does if you turn it off. But if you turn it off to reset it and turn it back on again, it's immediately start beeping, you're screwed, right? I guess that kind of makes sense, so you have to remove that. And then if you put it on the 10 amp range and put it in there, it won't tell you. Obviously it's not going to reach any current because it's not going across the current shunt at the moment, but if you put it in there, it's happy. But then if you switch to any of the voltage range ranges, 600 milliamp range is telling you it's in the wrong place again. So will it do that for that as well? Yeah, so it won't tell you if you're in if you put it in a 10 amp range there. Put it in 10 amps. Plug the thing back in. Yeah, so you're in the 10 amps, you're in the 10 amps, that's fine. So if you put it on the 10 amps and put it in the 6 amps, yeah you will. So if you put it in the 600. Yeah, so it does tell you if it's in the right one for the range. It's quite good really, isn't it? Because I have blown a few fuses on meters by probing across something after I've been measuring current and not realising these in the wrong place. So it's quite quite handy feature, that. So just sum up really, it's uh, for 25 quid, it's pretty good value. Uh, you know, it's good. I don't like display much in bright light, but other light, you can see now it's absolutely fine. Um, I like the setting. I also like the speed at which the uh, AC range settles down. Uh, the live is interesting, I don't normally use it, but it's an interesting feature. Long contact voltage is okay for single live wires, but no good for uh, sort of uh, AC flex unless you rotate the flex against the sensor. This is a good range, except it doesn't respond quickly, so for scanning and running down legs of things when you're running down a row of pins or something trying to find a connection, it can't really it's not really effective to use because it, it, a momentary contact even though it's zero ohms doesn't sound make the bu buzzer sound or really the display change so if you're poking around on a board you can't be uh, looking at the meter as well because um, you need to see where you what you're doing resistance range is good 100 meg I like that range a lot this works okay I've tested that the current is okay I've tested that I've used it actually to measure current and I know it's accurate so I'm not going to do that again now and then you've got these range up here. Don't know what this blue is for. <coughs> Anyone knows, let me know. Yeah, so a safe bet, I think, for 25 quid. It's got a good solid feel. The only other thing I was trying to get hold of was I've scratched the display. Um, it's kind of just ordinary. I think it's. Um, it's 
certainly got no AR coating or anything on it. And I think it, it is just, um, what's the name of the stuff I'm looking for? <coughs> Acrylic. So I was looking for to get, because by the time I've had this as long as this, the display will be completely screwed. You won't be able to see through the plastic unless you polish it again. I was just going to get a cheap mobile, find one, cut it out and stick it on just to protect it. Because this will, in the toolbox and everything else, this will get scratched to buggery because it's only an acrylic or something like that. It's, it's soft. I've polished it once already to get rid of the scratches I've made on it. And you can still see them. Yeah, so after a few years that will be shagged. So I'd advise you to cover that up. But the DM 100C, the 10,000 count one, yeah, pretty good. Can't go far wrong really, that price, can you? But it is a good piece of kit and uh, I will be using it, but not for continuity checking at high speed because it didn't actually check my things. If you can, subscribe to the link down in the corner. I hope you found that enjoyable. Um, <coughs> thanks very much for watching.